In this video, we strive to remain spoiler-free, discussing only story and plot elements from the books relevant to what has occurred already on the show. When necessary, a spoiler warning with a countdown will be given. Hey everyone, I'm Jen. I'm Bill, also known as Matt Stagger. I'm Max. And I'm the Geeky Hippie. Welcome back to What the Adaptation, the YouTube show that reviews adaptations from one format to another format. This week, we are wrapping up our, well, not entirely wrapping up our Season 2 coverage of The Wheel of Time, but we're covering Season 2, Episode 8. What is the title, Max? What was meant to be. And we have a guest, our returning guest. You see Jim here next to us. This is the closer. He's closing out most of our seasons with us lately. So we figured we'd have him back on. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing great, and I'm enjoying the reputation. Man, the closer. Good. It works that's for closer. me. Always Looks like be you're closer. traveling. Yeah. Looks like you're traveling. I am. I am. Yeah, I'm actually speaking to you from Kansas, a flyover state today. But uh doesn't matter. <laughs> Technology, man. I'm with you it wherever works. I'm at. It look, works. So, Max, what can you tell us about this episode? Well, in this episode, we have Sana Hamari returning to direct this episode. So I'm not going to go over their directing credentials and what they've directed before. Uh, Tim Earl wrote this episode. Their uh, prior writing history is kind of low. Uh, they had directed one episode of a TV series called Natural 20, a couple of short films, a film called A Knock at the Door, which apparently there's like five other films with the same title. So I'm not sure if it's like for a film festival by the <laughs> same name. I have no idea. Wow. Uh, they've also been involved in um, the movie called Cloverfield Paradox, which oh, I've seen that. Some of you might know. And Chips, the remake from the 20 somethings. Mm. Shouldn't have been done. No. <laughs> yeah. Didn't need to be done. Debatable. <laughs> <laughs> it, it had its moments. That's, that's okay. all I'll say. Uh in the finale of season two of the Wheel of Time, Hopper flies, pair and axe. Elaine takes an arrow to the knee. Nynaeve pushes. Egwene has a heart has had enough. Lan catches an arrow. Moraine sinks some ships. Rand sticks Ishmael with a pointy end. And Mohig Mohigadine softly, softly from the shadows. I love it. I love that Max. Love her. Yeah. Oh, so. What did everybody oh, think shadows. of this episode? There were highs and lows for me. <laughs> um, some parts I really liked. Some parts I was like, oh my gosh. Like, Especially the Matt scene. I think we can all agree we were all very happy at certain parts of the Matt scene. There were other parts that were a little bit of, of low, but we'll probably get to that. So yeah, overall, I'm mixed. Uh, but at the, I guess, <laughs> end of the day, I'm happy. So I just am going to end on, on that. Mm -hmm. However, there were some things that definitely took me out of the fantasy, <laughs> but I'll get to that when we get to it. I, I yeah. love the episode, honestly. Um, there are some choices that I'm, I'm interested to see where they go from here, where I'm kind of up in the air on whether yeah. they were good or bad. We'll have to wait and find out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, overall, I love the episode. Same. I'm looking forward to future seasons to see what happens. I enjoyed it over the over the course of the season. A switch kind of flipped for me, where I've been finally kind of able to let go of some of the frustration at adaptation choices and just enjoy good television. And I felt this was a great capstone episode for what they built in season two. So there was a lot of moments, a lot of lot of finishes, a lot of great stuff. I'm with Jen. There's certainly some things I didn't care for, but comparing it to the end of season one, oh, night and oh, day, yeah, night and Dan, day. Oh. loved Agreed. it. Yeah, from Agreed. from one to a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no doubt about that. As far that. as the east is from the west, baby. I mean, exactly. it's so different. You're so right about that. I <laughs> that's so I, true. I had harder time with earlier part of the season than the later part of the season. Um. I, I still had some complaints. Um, Bill and I have talked about those quite a bit the last week or so. Um, 
But for the most part, you know, I, I would say I overall, I enjoyed this episode. There are some things that I wish had been done different, things that I wish had looked different. Um, and just, I don't know. I just, there's some weird design choices that they went with. I don't know so much weird, but a, a, a really heavily repeated motif is seen and design, especially with the Sean Chan or anything Sean related Chan, to the Sean yeah. Chan. Mm -hmm. Mostly with the Sean Chan, but it comes into play with the horn too. So, you want to start us off, Max? Yep. Of all the changes of source material, what are some you enjoyed and what are some you disliked? Uh, we want to throw a Jed? I actually like, um, because I understand for purposes they had to cut the the fin, the tower, I think we can safely say that Matt's not going to have his journey. Uh, I think maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will come back in, in, in a future season. So maybe I shouldn't say safely. Um, the Where he put the, the dagger on the Ashandari, I kind of like that. I, I, I was like, okay, that's how he's going to have the Ashandari in this. And this, for that change, you had to 100% take yourself away from the writing of the books and say, this is a new turning of the wheel for the show. Um, and in that case, I thought it would be kind of difficult to get it strapped on there without touching it. I was like, I don't know how that was achieved with such precision, but it was actually... Uh, the the science the thought of it was was kind of cool i was like okay that's a that's an interesting way to tell how he gets his ashandari versus the book way i do like prefer the book way but uh for how he gets it i actually kind of liked it so that was a that was a big change in this episode i liked it uh, I, you're speaking with confidence that mm -hmm. that's definitely the only way he's going to get that weapon oh. uh, is that is that has that been said somewhere i don't no. think so this, this yeah, I don't think Moraine be, is going to let him you know, keep that dagger. 0 0.01 <clears throat> version. The real one yeah. might still be coming. True. I'm like, yeah, I don't think Moraine is going to let him keep the dagger <laughs> in any no. capacity. Mm. I don't know if Fane's going to let him keep it. Yeah, True. that too. Yeah, I, I ah, Fane's that. a punk. He ran away already. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> For now. Yeah. Was your my margin? favorite change in this? Okay. Was uh. Karen killing Jeffrey Bornhold in yes. his wolf rage moment. They blended yeah. like three different things to make that happen, but it happens right then in front of Dane. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So, and what's the only great. thing Dane knows about him? Two rivers. Two rivers. <laughs> Two rivers. Yeah. Sets up season three perfectly. Really well. Very... Well, that's well written to tie up a whole bunch of things and put it all in that one piece. And that Agreed. Two Rivers connection is actually based on just a ring. And the fact mm -hmm. Perrin never denied it. But my favorite moment was, my favorite change, I should say, is very, very, very close to yours, Jim. Mine was when Perrin and Dane actually get done killing somebody, bump, turn around, and see each other. Two Rivers, hey! And then continue, you know, fighting his compatriots for a moment. Yep. You know, I I kind of I kind of like that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and part it of it's because it up nice, you know, Dane is too likable. He, he, he's yeah, and I know that's a weird complaint to say somebody's too likable, but Dane should never no. be mm -hmm. likable. We said that about Leandrin. We said that about Lanfear. <laughs> we we said that about Aram in season one. Yeah, Aram so. was probably the most charming character in all of season one. You know, if I had to pick somebody in season one I wanted to hang out with, it would probably be him, just the way he behaved. But I I kind of almost want to hang out with this Dane Bornhold up to an extent, you know? Yeah. What we what we saw of him up hang until, out. you know? Hang out. Yeah, I mean, just smoke a couple <laughs> with him, maybe have a little bit to drink, and, you know, then fight some dirty Aiel. Well, we know the White Cloaks can smoke you out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They yeah. throw they children at you. Children. Yeah. One one change I loved, I'll go with, is I mm -hmm. love the fact that Egwene saved herself. I am completely yeah. okay with it that change. Yep. Um, given worked. the way everything was taken away from her this season, having her sort of seize her power back in that moment herself, 100% on board with that. With I that. really enjoyed yeah. that change. So, 
And we, we're all in agreement yeah, that they nailed it. the Damani stuff for her all oh, through yeah. this season, right? Oh, yeah. That was absolutely yeah. excellent. Yes. yes yeah. uh, Zila Mendez Jones. He was so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I told you about how I, I mean, felt about Zila. I was a little, I had a little bit of a crush on him every time he was on scene, so I was very conflicted. But yes, he did a very good job. I mean, yeah, just crush it because I could not stand the character. I was, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, oh, please let Rena burn. I'm okay with it. Yeah. My uh, anybody else flinch when that hair, that braid got cut off? Hmm. Ooh, I was just yes. like, oh. my cry. my wife's never read the books. She was watching it today with me. And when she did that, my wife went, you bitch. (laughs) Okay, they're doing it right. They're doing it right. When that happened, though, it was right there and then. I was like, oh, she's killing her before the episode's done. Rana's dead. Totally dead. Because you could see. It's like, that was was it. We're done. Breaking point. She's like, no, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, Changes for me would be the scene behind Glenn, where Rand just completely <laughs> ganks Turok. Yes. I'm on board too. I, I like I it. love that. I loved no, it. Oh, man. I'm, I'm torn on that. One. I loved it. And, well, I agree and, it was awesome, but I miss what we've missed because of it. That's all. Well, That's well, the all. only well, part I the only part I disliked was I was hoping Turok would have said, "Hold my nails." <laughs> <laughs> You know, we brought we kind of brought in the Indiana Jones and Whip moment is what this is now. You know, and then yeah, they all did. And because they had to do that because they never showed Rand training. Yeah, Yeah. well, Um, but they did give evidence. It would have been unearned. It would have been unearned. They gave evidence that he'd been training when he met in a previous episode when he met with the Amerlin. Yeah, and Lan is like, oh, you know, he recognized the form. So they they'd given themselves the opportunity if they wanted to, because come on, we know Rand wasn't ready for Turok when he did it in the books. Yeah, so why would he have to be ready for the show? It was um, he was more ready in the books than he is in the show. He has a little bit of training from an insane man. Which is great. He's got a little bit of the forms he can do. Heron dips his I wing, which is what he did to Lan. So I get that. That no problem. But he has not earned a Blade Master win. Wait, wait, wait. There's or no we could way. say he has an insane level of training. Yes, mm. I, I do feel like Lan's uh, comments about his training, you know, his sword forms, could have mm-hmm. been patronizing. Eh, it could have been. Oh, I, like, I, I oh know. you know some sword forms, Wink. Rafe, <laughs> Rafe, oh. has, come out, Rafe has come out and said, 100% we are getting land training Rand. They, they weren't able to do it yeah. quite as soon as they do in the books, but we I are getting too. So yeah. I understand the Turok moment. You have to do something else. And yeah. it's kind of perfect because, frankly, it's 15 people versus Rand. You're not gonna go sword to sword. Yeah. And like like I, I just loved how he just completely ganked Turok. And Turok's like this nothing character in the books in a lot of ways. Like yeah. he's there mm-hmm. for one book and he's barely present as a sword master. Mm-hmm. And he's just you know, he gets well, that's, killed. That's entirety of Turok's purpose yeah. in book two is to be Rand's first blade master yeah. kill. But like yeah. in, in the book, he's barely there present. In the show, he's we see him like one scene. Pretty much like in the book. We see him for one scene and then we confront him with Rand. He for one knew scene. how to open the box. <laughs> that was his exactly. purpose as well. Yes. Well, and, and he demoted uh, Sarah, yeah. so he, like, yeah. which I think was important to the story. Yeah, it's, yes. like, it's like one yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah. It um, was like all one part of one scene. I will say I love the fact that all the Sean Chan in death we're kneeling to the dragon it's a nod to the books where he makes the corpses kneel to him (laughs) i love the fact that they were all on their knees kneeling to him in Mm -hmm. death i'm like that was my that that was my favorite part about this scene is that they were all kneeling like that even the the voice the the servant then taking himself out too i like which i think a bunch of tv people probably totally missed they Mm -hmm. didn't understand what that meant but book Mm -hmm. readers totally got that yeah me too i was like oh the other change actually i liked was uh uno being a hero of the horn 
Me too. God, I'm, not sure, smile. I'm not sure God, I'm a no. huge fan of him being uh, canon Galadiel Kane of the Hero of the Horn, is Correct. what Raph is saying. I'm not sure I'm a huge yeah. fan of that change. Because I'm not I'm sure okay how that it. works with a Brigitte thing on all that. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how that's going to work in the lore, because like, where does that make her in the uh, whole... And that's if they thing. even associate the two on the show. We mm-hmm. don't know that because, Brigida and Gaidel Kane are going to be associated yeah. on the show. Because she was definitely there among the heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Some people and weren't I, some people weren't seeing her. I'm like, how do you miss the lady literally miss shooting Brigida? Bow? Yeah, I'm like, it's literally Brigida. It's she was like she's literally we, there. She was shooting people with that with a How bow. do you miss that? Yeah. Hello. There she's are original Katniss Everdeen. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I don't know that that's gonna be the same actor playing Brigitte. I had that same thought. Yeah. Yes, um, same. Placeholder. Placeholder yeah, actor. It's just no a idea. placeholder. It, it like uh you watch uh we Jim and I before we started recording, we were talking about Battlestar Galactica. If you watch the mini series, uh there's a scene where one character is burning with a cigarette a picture of his wife, and it's a completely different person that we see six episodes later when his mm-hmm. wife shows up on the on the <laughs> series. Um mm. Uh, sorry, I just thought about, about this actually because of behind me. I did not catch this watching it, but Chris did when Lanfear mm. pushes um Moraine and Land through the gate, and then right before Mashin Shin, which is uh, it was cool for back to see Mashin Shin again. Uh, anyway, when she throws them through the gate, and then she looks at Rand and she goes, Now close your eyes. Chris is like, Oh, you smart girl. <laughs> he goes, You're gonna do traveling and you don't want him to see the weaves potentially. He goes, So you're wanting so you made him close his eyes. I'm like, is that is that canon? Is that I would, possible? I wouldn't I say he so wouldn't that he doesn't see, see the weaves. weaves. Yeah, I think he can't see, see her weaves. weaves. That's what I thought. Yeah, went, okay. I think it causes motion down. sickness, is what happens, or something. <laughs> she's like, "Close your eyes, don't Just go off on my beautiful sure dress." Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure might... she, she used travels, the true power. Right? To, yeah, I'm pretty sure she oh, uses yeah. the true power yeah. to travel out from the ways out of the ways. So we've might... gotten traveling already with Landfair. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah, it might have more to do with. We it got might have more to do at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Mogi it dead, might have Mogi more dead. to do with just so he doesn't see what's going on. Yeah. That's, yeah. Mm-hmm. True. Like, even if he can't see the weaves, he might have an idea of what's going on. Mm. He knows Kinda it's like possible. A... He might work it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because uh, didn't cause... he see uh, Suan's knife weave thing? I can't remember if he actually saw that or not. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Maybe. I don't think so. I don't remember. Uh, and we didn't. We really didn't talk enough yet, though, about the things we didn't like because I was saving those. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. okay. Go ahead. Okay. So you know, there's some things you know definitely that I mm, didn't care for. Go uh, for it. And I, okay, I I'm gonna I'm gonna pick because I don't want to go through them all, but the the biggest <laughs> one for me. Was more rain sinking the ships. A lot of people. The didn't three do. oaths, which they've already established to exist, would not have allowed her to kill those people. Yes, would not would. have allowed it. Yes. Yes. How? Because they are endangering the dragon and trying to gentle him, which endangers everyone in the entire world, including herself. Therefore, absolutely, she is in danger, as is everyone else in the world. Mentally, Moraine will make that leap, and you know she will. That's why she said, I will let a thousand innocent people die just to save him. That's why they have that line. It makes sense. Mentally, that's where she's at. I think she actually said, on the chance it's him. On the chance it's him. Yeah. I think. See, I'm glad I brought it up, because that helps me. Thank you. I I mean, that's what I thought anyway. Let me toss another one at you, and maybe you can help me on this one. Sure. The fact that now we've got seals that are big that are apparently are trapping the Forsaken mm-hmm. instead of they've re envisioned the boar in a way that I didn't like. I don't think it is it, the boar. I just didn't like it. 
to be I honest. I think it's just the seals. They're separated from them. Honestly, I think they went and they picked off the Forsaken one by one and they created seals for them. I think the Dark Ones prison is an entirely different thing. Yes. And we're going to get I'm the saying, discs. I'm saying that they went ahead and they trapped each one separately yeah. and we get this big thing for them. And that's a big departure from how it happened yeah. in the books. Oh, yeah. And to me, it seemed, I don't know, just a little corny. So it, it didn't work for me. That's all. You know, that's all that something... one was. Oh, no, something 100%. we have not had in the show yet is the concept of the dark one itself. Yeah, of this they overarching really dark much one. About it. They've yeah. implied it the way the Forsaken have talked. You well, know that what, what was the being one ready thing... to swear to him. You know, th there's okay, been references. So here's something for you. What was one of the overarching themes of the first book? What was going on with the weather in the first book? Oh yeah, Too it was cold. like uh, crazy heat wave. Yeah. First book was, well, was a very long winter that just oh, finally got yeah, over. Yeah, it was winter, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. It just got over a very long winter. Mm -hmm. And then they were getting into a very long summer. Mm -hmm. Right, the heat wave came next. And that was tied to the dark one. Mm -hmm. And it we're not getting that so far. Mm -mm. They haven't even mentioned the overly long winter or the overly long summer. True. I think that's because they're cutting the main point of that which was the bowl of the winds and i am okay with them cutting that honestly. well even beside that they haven't touched oh, i can live beside, with that too actually even beside that That's they haven't touched point. on food spoilage yeah Not overall yet, no. corruption I, I think that's going to come closer as the seals the dark ones because i think yeah. we are going to get the actual dark one seals um yeah. as those begin to fail i think that's when they're going to bring in the corruption of food but like you know, that's Spoiling. something to mention. It's like we haven't got the Dark One's influence right. on things yet. Mm. Bubbles of Evil are going to start probably, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. probably in the next season or beginning of season four, probably. Yeah, because really Bubbles of Evil didn't become a thing until the Dragon Reborn. It yeah. wasn't in the Great Hunt that we were really seeing those yet. It was emphasized right. in the Dragon Reborn and even more so in the Shadow Rising. That's right. Yeah, I I'm think my sure. biggest dis... Dislike ahead, was probably Moraine's all of a sudden ranged ability to to reach that far with the power was just insane. Are and we I'm getting, like, whoa, whoa. Like the things we did not like about this episode, isn't that a question for later? Because I'm <laughs> holding off on that. Well, changes that we didn't like. Those were just changes. Okay, so this is not a change. This is show specific. So this oh, is not okay. applicable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I overstepped. Sorry. My bad. No, you didn't. No, I, did, right. I wasn't sure. Uh, later, we have scenes that you hate or hated. Okay, that's probably I, where I'll I don't hate. I'm just yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. That's no, I'll, I'll, I'll use hate for mine. I'll use hate. <laughs> we'll get we'll get to that. Well, mine's just, you know, I just find it yeah. weird. I don't I have any others I have to mention. Already. So if you want to go on, I'm good now. Let's move on. Okay. All right, so the next question is, how will the show interpret the appearance of nature, costumes, props, scenery, creatures, practical VFX, and or music? Loved it all. That that was a zero problem for me. Hopper, <laughs> oh my god. That was a, yeah. that was just they did that with a real like um like dog. Like that was <laughs> incredible. That was a practical effect technically. Um that dog can act. Yeah. Yeah. Um um I I agree maybe there were two little sensors to make the smoke but uh the final effect of the white cloaks popping out uh was amazing to me on horseback mm. i i enjoyed it as far as a theatrical enjoyment anyway i thought it was it was done well uh their sparkling white uniforms and all that desert would make sense so i'm glad they kept with that um um, I'm okay. I know that um, I agree kind of with what Glenn was saying earlier on the Sean Sean is just too much of the same theme going on that was very, very heavy on that. Um, but I kind of liked it. I like the them leaning into the kind of Moroccan setting that they were actually physically in. Um, I, I really I was drawn to the architecture, everything going on in the background. So to me, I was okay with it. But I understand if someone's tired of it by now. <laughs> I also understand that as yeah. well. So, lots of scalloped edges for the yes. shot. Yeah, uh, on uh, everything. I'll be putting pictures of all kinds of stuff that has the that uh, that motif on it, even down to the belt on the Daco Val. On well, at least on Loyal, his belt had yeah. the, had that pattern 
all the way to the horn has that on the one side. A very similar. Love it or hate it, they were very efficient with consistent. Correct. So I'll give them somebody. That, you know. Somebody has 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 quite a thing for that design motif. Yeah. There was one particular element of that was special effects that I really appreciated how they did, and it was destruction of Rand slash Tam's hair and mark sword blade, mm. the way it went, and then even the mark on his hand, and they just they did that so perfectly. It's like yeah. he's just got a stump of a thing now, and he's looking at his hand like, "Ow, what the fuck?" You know, it was good. It, it, it was and really that whole well done. thing with his hand that was off the view, the book readers. Because yeah. they've not even hinted at twice and twice shall he be marked on the show. Yes, they have. When? Baron did. Um, when she was talking to Moraine, she was going over the prophecies about uh, the dragon over Toman Head. She also mentions his palms will be marked with Heron. I um, don't remember. Before, I before they get they the adjusted because there was there was an uproar when the sword when the blade was first out there that the Heron was on the sword instead of on the pommel where or grip where it was supposed to be and, and he then it shows has up. his hand on the sword blade as yeah. he's shoving it in so yeah. they they got the little details that. so that they could pull I that off i missed that line oh. thank you for pointing that out bill i'll oh, have to yeah, watch no you that next time i rewatched the entire yeah, series from season one all the way through again so well uh mm -hmm. speaking of that turok sees the heron on the i believe the hilt yeah yeah it? Mm. which She's i've never hill. noticed a heron on the hill before that That's shot right he did so i'm not sure if it's always been there and i just haven't been paying attention but i did not see it in any other shots yeah. it wasn't on the shot we got pre-season one of the yeah. weapon right. so they just like moved it twice i think at least mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, the, 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 there could be a they, it could have a heron on both the blade and on the hill and on the scabbard, for that matter. I think there's a scabbard, a, a, a heron on the scabbard as well. You know, mm -hmm. it's not unreasonable for it to have three heron marks, you know. You know, just one on the hilt or the scabbard is showing off to everybody your heron mark, heron, mm -hmm. you know, a blade master. If your sword only has it on the blade, then you're kind of keeping it hidden at your heron, you know, that you have I mean, a if you can have 50 million scallops, why can't you have three herons, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I liked it. They're consistent. <laughs> consistently heron and consistently scalloped. <laughs> and scaring and held. Um, I'll be honest, the soundtrack, especially the Hero of the Horn section, was amazing. Um, Lorne Balf. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was epic. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I yeah. loved it. So, I don't just like the music. Aspect. I think my I would, favorite. I, I would. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Well, I was just going to agree with you in the extent that I didn't notice the music a lot. It was so beautifully just really? complimentary in the background that it makes it all work. That's good music to me. I that agree. it's helping lift yeah. the emotions. It's helping drive home the points. But I'm not thinking about the music. It's just doing its thing to me. So I agree. Yeah, I've watched the episode four times, so that's probably why I noticed the music. Then you started noticing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I even made that note. <laughs> I have it on my notes. It's like, oh yeah, the music. Don't forget the music. It was awesome, especially Hero of the Horn. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, that's I, probably why I didn't notice it the first couple times either, because I was just so into it. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, Lauren Balf can be more loved by the community than Daryl K. Sweet is. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not a. It's not a high bar there that's Max. not hard <laughs> we start give me romance line. novel ran <laughs> how does nick cage feel about that okay uh, there you go <laughs> had to go there yes i love it um i will say i actually love the horn of villier as a prop i actually love the design <laughs> it looked alien futuristic from an age like before the age of legends have have you seen it did look like something out of farscape yeah of of somebody saying i know exactly where to hide the horn of a lear where nobody can find it and it was just in this tabletop setting of fiesta wear and it was sitting <laughs> there with was surrounded by plants and it was like no one will yep. ever find the horn of a totally. Totally. and it looked like a little fiesta wear jug i was okay with it a lot of people didn't like it i was like 
okay i've seen some people like on the internet say there's no whole there's no air valves for you to make a sound with but it's a magical horn so whatever i guess but like um I, i'm okay with it it's a magical there horn. were Bye. there were scalloped holes <laughs> along the the edge there, were. there absolutely even were even better it does I, i'm okay with it it's like all right, there were scalloped slices all you know, the way on the back something i want to toss into this because I, I don't see it'll fit in our questions otherwise but we're talking about matt and the horn <laughs> and i did not like what they did with matt cawthon throughout the season until now and Ooh. episode eight i'm like thank you thank you okay but now i'm happy with matt cawthon me too well, it makes sense um, because the entire season has been people telling him you're no good and you are no hero. When in fact, he is a hero. Mm -hmm. Literally. Um, changes that's going to make, I'm going to have to wait and see whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. Um, I'm okay with it right now. Um, I I do think there are other ways he can get the uh, Ashendari from the book and the necklace. There are other yeah. ways they can do that, hundred percent. Sure, hope so, he get the fox like, head. He'll yeah. find them, and he'll find them at the city that they go to. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Yeah, that would be they the won't... perfect opportunity for him yes. to to find them there. So we don't need two doorways, just hmm. one. Quick. I don't and think they can do that. Still, do they can totally I, do that. I well, don't. You know, think when you go we're through one doorway, doorway, you 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 got to have one. I mean, when you go through one doorway, you come back through it. So there's two doorways. But there's no reason they can't have a doorway in <laughs> that city that's still coming. We know they're going to go there. Uh, we need a way for a certain main character and a certain Forsaken to come to a resolution on their relationship. Um, we need something similar to a doorway, even. Mm, yeah. We need something. Maybe, yeah, we'll see something when that particular tackle happens. But maybe they're uh, going to yeah. change it to where they're comrades in arms for a good part of. <laughs> or they can oh, Ghostbuster. Great, it. though. How cryptic can, can we keep screens. talking about this? This is fine. Okay. <laughs> well, fine. We can only do the spoiler. Okay, Glenn, get the spoiler ready. Did anybody notice the parallel of uh, Lanfear absolutely kicking? Moraine out of a doorway. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. I enjoyed We're that. Get that reversed. Yeah. I hope I'm so. like, I, I love that they're sort of <sighs> setting up that opposition between Landfear and Moraine, and they even have the physical one now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love yeah. that. That's good. I'm like, that's going to work. That's going to work so well. Mm -hmm. yeah, spoiler I, over. Yeah. Hmm, spoiler over. Of course, they could just completely reverse it as an adaptation and it's Moraine that kicks Lanfear through a doorway, but mm. Moraine doesn't go through because she's the biggest star mm. and they decide mm. to keep her around. So oh, they can make why... it a they can make it a well instead of a doorway and she gets kick her. I didn't and notice. Yell, this is Sparta. I didn't notice <laughs> I didn't notice Jane Farstrider among the heroes or anybody that looked like him. So Mm -mm. was a guy Arter. that was like i fought with you a billion times that was arter hawkwing right yeah absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he had the that hawkwing helm and... yeah, yeah yeah but yeah. jane farstrider wouldn't have been with the heroes because yeah, he's out yeah. in the he's world right now you're right you're right yeah. and on the show yeah. it's a she i didn't think of that jane's a woman on the not, show. not necessarily Is that confirmed what no. the way that di line of dialogue last season when rand and loyal were talking about oh, jane that's farstrider right. a girl but he said she and, and, a Gwen it's, always wanted to be like Jane herself. Uh, well, it it's could how, be. That one it's how really the doesn't make a difference. In the slightly, it, it, it's slightly hmm. questionable. How did Gwen her, would want to be, you know, Jane herself, as in like herself wants to be Jane. Oh. It just, or, or herself being Jane or herself being a Gwen, there was a lot of it's debate. It's all where you placed a comma. Yeah, yeah and, you, you could easily see it being either. My interpretation mm -hmm. at the time and still is is that on the show Jane will be a woman and that may that's not oh, I'm a okay with that. Yeah. I, I mean the way it makes more sense. Either way, since we've gone off topic, is did anyone else have any spells for uh costumes, props, scenery, VFX? No, just uh, well stuff. done this season. So third question of the night. What is a scene sequence you most remembered, hated, or enjoyed? 
<laughs> I don't know if Bill. it's Bill. so much as go ahead, Bill. Oh, um, yeah, my, I wasn't a big fan of Moraine being able to channel that far all of a sudden. Um, yeah, we've too. never gotten any hint she had that kind of power, power or ability to channel that far. So that that, that mm-hmm. came off a little wonky to me. I didn't hate it, and I could go, oh, okay, well, yeah, we'll chalk like, it well, up she to, to really Viren. powerful. Hmm. Yeah, you know, plot armor to Vera, and we'll we'll go with that. It, it didn't bother me to that. Much. I mean, but that was the one little thing in the episode where I'm like, eh. I agree. I, I don't, I'm not I'm not 100 sold on that. So for me, that that bugged me a little bit. I didn't. Scene you enjoyed. Scene you enjoyed. Um. It. I mean, a lot of people are are upset about uh, Egwene being able to to hold off Ishi for a short time, which I don't understand. It completely makes sense. I love that scene where, you know, she's giving her all. She even turns around and says, sorry, because she's losing. She knows she's losing. I mean, you know, that whole scene where they all end up coming together up on that yeah. rooftop was just... Mm. Yeah. Ishii is just messing with him at that point. 100%. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, he had just broken six... Uh, forsaken out of their seals and we've seen what it took to release land fear so he's going to be a little tired is she there now <laughs> my favorite moment in the episode is what's behind matt right there or bill right there uh the, the, oh, that, yeah. that that oh, yeah, moment yelling the war cry yeah, agreed. agreed um i i was clapping i i, I yelled it i, 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 I yelled almost, too Oh, absolutely. Was- I almost jumped up and I, I was sitting cross legged and I almost jumped straight into the air mm-hmm. when yeah. he yelled that. And I was like, yeah. Yes. I was so happy. Was so I literally cool. woke my wife up because <laughs> I had D D on Thursday, so I didn't get to watch it till midnight. And I went, Yeah. She came out of the bedroom. She's like, What are you doing? And I'm like, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm like, you don't understand. Oh, yeah, I know. I've no. waited my entire, entire life, life for that moment. Mm-hmm. The one thing I didn't like, though, was those Damane and Soldam channeling at a man they couldn't even see hmm. and managing to keep him shielded when they couldn't even see. Oh. Yeah, that was you a know? little bit of a stretch. And they started no, channeling I, I at him yeah. before they even saw him because they started channeling. He was on the ground. And they went up over the parapet, yeah. and then he stood up and got snatched by it. So, you know, but I think That's the show true. has done away with the whole idea of not being able to channel if you can't see what you're channeling at. Because Moiraine in season one referred to Gitara as having been blind her whole life, and she was a nice to die. That wouldn't work in the books. So I think they've gotten rid of the needing to be able to see the channel for the show. Well, I mean, she she was a nice guy in the books. Yeah. But she didn't um, she wasn't born blind. Jordan made, did say that uh Jordan mm-hmm. did say in his interview things mm-hmm. that being blind wasn't a you could channel while blind. It was just like trying to what was it? Knit blindfold her back behind your black back with mittens on, mm-hmm. like very large mittens on behind your back. You know, mm. you know, blindfolded you behind your back. Easily. Yeah, like so it was possible. It was just very improbable. Well, that's yeah, a chance from ch- what he chance. put in the books. Yeah, them, them, um those 13 holding grand not even knowing where he was and then changing the direction of where he was i agree that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a stretch it was a little little stretch no. yeah a little bit I, i'd put a, up there with moraine having you know magical as uh morgan <laughs> morgan from podcast the dragon calls him <laughs> the fire dolphins yeah, in the ocean from that distance. So yeah, I like Morgan. I've, I've I'd, Morgan. I'd put the dragon on par with her becoming a giant in the first book. I've yes. seen other people think, say that too. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to be honest. At first, I thought, okay, that's a little cheesy, and then I watched a bunch of people who have never read the books, and they love that scene. I and like I'm like, it. okay, it's working for them. 
for me, it felt a little cheesy because I know in this world there are no dragons and nobody knows what that creature is on the flag. And that's why it bothered me a little bit. And I also, have, I have to put that book brain aside for a second and right? go, okay, it's and cool looking. Part of what that scene in the book does is lets people identify Rand by what he looks like. Yes. Nobody that was witnessing it knows who the hell that was up there on the tower. They just saw a man, presumably that's a man, true. standing there with this big red fiery thing. And who is that? They don't know. They can't see his face. Yeah. Whereas well, in the books, the we got his face. Well, somebody up there is the dragon. There's five, six people up there. Hmm. Yeah. Which one's the dragon? Maybe they did you know? intentionally leaning into which one of you is the dragon and they could like. And they I don't, don't know, know that the first that person who walked up to the edge is the dragon. Any of them could be the dragon. They, hmm. they yeah. were shouting the dragon as Ran first stepped up. He was by himself. The sure. crowd, you can hear them shouting about dragon the dragon and the, because and the fire had already started around the box right oh. but they but so then it, they saw more well, the people Aiel show up because they said the karakarn yeah so, yeah. They, so they could see something mm -hmm. i mean whether it's a silhouette it doesn't really matter they're gonna have to come down off that tower and people are gonna be like that's him somebody's gonna point him out and it's gonna mm -hmm. go from there i don't see how they could have done the fight in the sky and not make I it did. look decent there's no way to do that and make it look awesome. I, okay, you guys I, know that I, meme of like that cowboy yelling? Cowboy where it's, where... <laughs> That cowboy video? Yes. I know what you mean. I got to track that video down. If anybody knows what the name of that video is, please leave it in the I, comments. That's what I'm thinking in my brain when I even hmm. read the books. Even with yeah. better, I, I think of them too just like silhouetted like a... um like a projector screen like but just kind of almost transparent to where you can see like clouds behind them even and it's just following their movement and the, that's what i'd already seen so i thought they were going to do something like that like technicolor rand up there mm. yeah i never thought we were going to get them fighting in the sky the way we do in the book i did not I expect know. it I so was not hoping I, but I, I i there's just no way to pull that off without making it, it barely look makes awful. sense in the books so yeah, yeah they're it's not going to bring it to awful. tv I thought we were going to get like the full meme awful quality and lean into it. <laughs> I think it would work just as well as that yeah. red, so, that fiery <laughs> creature. I liked it. I don't like it. A scene yeah, I, I enjoyed, mind. memorable, was just the battle portion that included the Aiel and Parent, mm -hmm. where yes. we're seeing mm -hmm. Aiel going all badass. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of have issue with the Aiel being there in the first place. I felt like they got shoehorned into this season. So, yay, we have Aiel. But regard that, regardless of that part, we got to see three of them working in tandem, going off, doing the dance. And that was pretty brilliant. I love Matt going, I hope your friends can fight. <laughs> and I'll be in yeah. Like, move. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do wish that the, the Aiel maidens had dropped their bows and done more spear or even open hand fighting because we, we've already seen proof that at least avienda could have handled herself it, uh, on that street without her without her bow i yeah. one of my pet peeves with 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 medieval warfare combat on tv and shows is people fighting melee combat close quarters combat with a bow and arrow yeah, shoot, shoot, shooting somebody five, ten feet away from the, them. I hated it on Arrow. I hated it in Lord of the Rings. I, I just that's what I was about to say. I'm like that you hated that in Lord of the Rings. That's not where a bow and arrows place is. And when you're carrying spears on your back and you can fight empty-handed the way the Iel maidens fight, you shouldn't be wasting your time with a bow and arrow. It, hey. Glenn, can, could you Google fantasy for me and, and maybe fiction? <laughs> could you Google those for me, please? I don't know those words. Come on, man. I get so buckled down in some of these minutia that I'm like, come on, man. I, oh, wait, let wait, it go. Like military have military practicality. Here in a minute. It, oh. it, it, it's just like you don't push the fletchings of an arrow through a wound. That's what I'm you. getting to. That's no, Don't steal don't. my thunder, Glenn. <laughs> I'm going to get past that. <laughs> We're all agreed on that one. Yeah. No, there's more to it. Just no, I, I'm just going to say, however, I'll wait till Jen goes. I'll save it for Jen. You, you're right. You don't do that. 
Hmm. Oh, there's more to it than just that. It doesn't end there. Oh, I'm sure it doesn't. Go but I will not see it. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I will say this. How many arrow injuries was Nynaeve dealing with as wisdom of <clears throat> Emmons Field? She probably would have Not a lot. Quite well, likely a she, few because, you know, they have, hunt they with arrows. Yeah, they that was practice. the Yes, arrow but they're two rivers archers. They don't miss. Hmm. They don't well, actually They miss when they first Maybe. start. Start. Yeah. See, not at, each at, other, man. Yeah, they don't shoot people? each other. I don't know. Mm. Uh, I, don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I mean, here, they don't give my... Copland's bows. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, everyone talks about the fletching, but I'm just like, okay, there was no blood. Okay, she's okay. First of all, it's pushed through. Like Nynaeve didn't even bandage it, my friend. <laughs> She's bleeding out now. She didn't at least wrap it before they hobbled off. They clearly showed it. Like, they clearly zoomed in. You could see. And then she's helping Elaine get up. And you could see her walking. And there's, first of all, I know blood. And second, it's not even wrapped. So she's bleeding out, yeah. walking through. She's how did she no blood. How, my friend, how did she make it to the top of the tower? But he said there's no blood. How did You'll she know if you go back and tower? watch. There's actually... <laughs> There, there, almost no I, pooling I'm human there. blood i'm still not done there okay uh, so <laughs> the very last shot i had been drinking heavily it was an hour she's, into it by the she's time. got tetanus the very last so shot of the episode after she may or may not because maybe somebody healed her off the screen that's the only thing i can think of but she it wasn't ever tied off she absolutely wasn't healed before she made it to the top of the tower when they're all five are standing there they're showing even Egwene's feet, and she's standing straight and tall with no blood on both feet. Egwene or Elaine? Elaine. Elaine. Okay. She's barefoot too. At least she was They're barefoot down on the her. street. She's not even like leaning on somebody. So as far hmm. as we know, oh, let's go through. Yeah, it's there. Elaine's dead. Yeah. Thank you. And yes. what is she doing when so, she heals Rand? So what so position is she in? She's so kneeling. She's kneeling on the leg before we know. Okay, so they they didn't put the arrow through. They didn't tie it off. She's hobbling up. She makes it to the top of the tower. All these in quick succession. She heals Rand leaning on it, and then they show her standing straight and tall, no blood, no, no even dried blood on both feet at the very last shot of the show. And everybody goes, oh my god, they're, they're all standing together. I'm screaming at the TV going, how the fuck is it stop? It took me out it, it's worse than the whole tracking. Like, it's the this worst. Has it's to do with book versus. It's just bad. No, it's no. I, I that get what you're saying. To be fired. It, like literally. Fired. <laughs> it's worse in my opinion. Do you remember that line last season that wow. that uh, Nynaeve had about how she was hmm. able to track them? That there's. <laughs> Yeah, there's no that, excuse that, for that. That, Nynaeve, <laughs> that Moiraine has a tell when it comes to tracking. Of course, that tell translates into while riding mm -hmm. on a horse and then being carried on another horse while you're unconscious. Mm -hmm. That tell still happens. Somebody doesn't understand tracking in season one. Somebody here doesn't understand first aid, basic medicine, basic injuries. Yeah, editing, just. That's the worst. Uh, that's the laziest job See, that I've seen. It can a be fantasy in a, in a thing that I've ever seen. That's it not can even be a, that's, fantasy, no. but there should still be some realism to your fantasy. It's very bad how they did Elaine. It was the most. It took me out of it. I couldn't even enjoy the very last amazing. Why scene did she get shot dragon. in the first place? She was dressed know. as a street, per, a, a commoner on the streets. That could have the, been, the, that the, been the a white mistake, cloaks though. had I'm just okay been that. saying, "We should help these the people." Shot her. She's standing next to. She a was shot bomb. by a white cloak. She's standing she's in, next to a soul bomb. She's in regular it's, street clothes. She's not a soul bomb herself, and she's not even a demani. They had no reason to think she's a witch. They, they totally yeah. fucked over. I'm sorry. They were helping with Elaine. They're the white cloaks cool. were They're helping the street, the, the, the commoners. They were helping the commoners. You see them pulling injured commoners out of the way. When yeah. Gwen gets all upset, that little girl being down there, you see the white cloaks. The white cloaks were helping the people, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. they're shooting one. They happen to be standing near a Saldam. 
So that what? could have been a misfire. She's that literally could, standing okay like that. inches away from a soul That could have been a, a, so. a, a mistake. A day, I mean, yeah, but she's I'm not dressed like a Sean Chan. That. Um, Oh my it's God. Stand- for any fire I mean, okay, a sold arm you, stops near you. Like, You're on the street and on. a sold arm comes you. want near realism, you. and then you complain when somebody misfires and accidentally hits a civilian? It could have happened. It, it, that's that's as real as it gets, buddy. Yeah. Not as that accurate as those, co- as those crossbowmen were. I mean, you see how it accurate the, all the time, that man. first cross shot bolt, the guy, you, you watch the timing. Go back and watch the timing of that, the one that gets seated through the throat. It's yeah. literally turn and not even a pause to aim it's to in the moment it gets to this spot the arrow's flying off the crossbow and we don't see him actually shoot elaine no we, we see, see that one hit, we see that one hit we don't, we don't see him actually shoot elaine so we don't know if he's got hit by a sword strike we don't see him get run over by a horse silly. we don't see anything well yeah I'm, to I'm just saying that that sort of thing happens in real combat all the time and you yeah. said you yeah. want realism it's well, true. here it is. This show show is going so far towards avoiding realism that hmm. you know it, it's leaving me well, not sure what to expect. Magical stuff, man. yeah. If you want uh, realism, she could have had tetanus, and that can fuck up how wounds don't bleed. Well, she's you gonna have, have shock, it now. which can cause you to not <laughs> feel pain, which is why you may be standing up and not realize, oh fuck, I should be hurt. You're bleeding out. You weren't even bandaged. Like I said, uh, tetanus can fuck up you not bleeding. How are you going to Copper bled power? more than she did, and she's got yeah. like three times like the I blood said, in her body. Than you the can wolf. you can literally get tetanus really fast and not bleed. Nynaeve wouldn't have at least bandaged her. Who knows? Yeah, we didn't see it, but that doesn't mean we, it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, she she could have done it off screen. I mean, yep. Guys, uh, it's a little shaky for me. It's a yeah. Yeah. shaky. You know, yes. You know, well, we don't know to bandage her. Listen, <laughs> yeah. we don't That's see them take a shit. We don't see them take a shit. That doesn't mean they don't take up shit. So. Okay, he's got a point there. I'm not going to lie. Hey, we this don't... is fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean that. At least that, we know, you know they pee in this She didn't bandage her. Do they gateway don't know. Their, their poop? Yeah. Uh, that's okay, mo- that, that's we're not going to JK Rowling it. We're not going to do that. Right wow. now. So, this like is where said, we've got to now. They have definitely had stuff edited from this season. Yeah. We don't know how much stuff has hit the cutting room floor. How much stuff in the script that never got shot. Because of these run times. We don't know how much like that scene was cut because what they just didn't, you know, hit the cutting room floor. Maybe they had a scene where my nave bandaged her up. We don't know. Maybe it's implied that they bandaged her because it's implied. Why show 30 seconds for bandaging her when this move they on? They used to the, the next same scene. thing Matt used to fix the yeah. dagger to the pole. Uh, uh, I'll, say this in defense. I'll say this in defense of the show. <laughs> I'll say this in defense of the show when it comes to this whole Elaine being wounded thing. It's not the only show that does this stupidity. Every yeah. show I've ever, I've watched in my entire life, except for medical shows, has ignored the realities of injuries. And, and typically, until about sure. 20 years ago, they ignored the injury you had the week before. You know, because oh you, you break your leg one episode on one show, and a week later you're walking fine, no injury. You know, oh, you broke your leg? No, I didn't. You know, well, I mean, the I said, traumatic the fletching, brain injury thing this show is 100. percent I don't know how that got Just through anyone. Wound. I don't know how the yeah, fletching thing got wound. through. I, I'm the like, same team, Max. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how the fletching got through. Mm-hmm. Like you should have broke off the arrowhead or the fletching, one of the two. I don't know how mm-hmm. anyone with any kind of First know. aid didn't know that. It took me out of no, it. No, agree. <laughs> you break um, off. The, and as someone pointed out to me, least. Raph was in Survivor. Yeah, he was. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean he knows know. how to pull a... I know. Yeah. I know. The Survivor, you don't get shot with arrows. Yeah, exactly. No. So <laughs> You do play Dave's At least not I'll give him credit on that. He, he gained yeah. in third place, and you have to be really good at the politics game to last that long. So... You guys want to move on to the next question? Yeah. Do it. All right. How well written was dialogue this episode and did it adapt any dialogue from the book? Which I think there's maybe a couple of lines. That line Matt's right got there. one. Matt's I got mean, one. Yeah. 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 The the end, I mean, come on. I don't I don't know who the guy. old tongue coach is, but uh well that done. Nailed it. I have trouble line. with that phrase and I've been listening to it for years. 
And I have trouble with that mm-hmm. phrase. And I mean, Donald Finn agree. nailed it. He did. I think he knew that it was. He was at least told, like, "Hey, you better get this. If you don't do anything, <laughs> yeah, do not screw this. <laughs> do not one screw up this one up. You, we're right. already like, okay, you're a new man. Whatever, we're cool with it. If you screw it up, oh no." <laughs> so, he also had to know this was his moment, moment. for his character. This is the shining moment of the whole season for him. He was not going to screw that up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was my favorite mm-hmm. scene. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. Um, My favorite. So dialogue from the book. Um, to answer the question, Max's question. Um, I'll let somebody else go. I'm not. Um, probably that naive, moment. Yeah. Naive. Um, with the um with Sita, when she was using the uh, Adam to. There are some lines out of there that are straight out of the book. Like I will make you regret the day your mother. Yes, yes, that your one was. Father to give her You're a right. Kiss. That, that was That's straight true. out of the book and mm-hmm. the way she delivered it i'm like my knee ain't playing no she's not <laughs> i have zero problem with the dialogue the way that, how well written the dialogue was it was well written mm-hmm. it's just yeah my but complaints most of with storytelling with the writing come from the storytelling adapted. choices yeah mm-hmm. yeah you know, not the I, dialogue uh, itself i like the uh dialogue between moraine and land it was kind of expected Ooh, yes. that we finally got that line. Yes. Mm-hmm. About Land being better than she was. Yeah. Like we yes. kind of expected. Didn't it. we all expect that? That's a nice line. Yeah. No, nice I didn't expect it. It was nice to hear. It was so nice. I agree. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Be, yeah, I, didn't I don't think you were on it. when I said that. So. <laughs> yeah, I've been expecting I mean, like, that. Yeah, I, I absolutely said. I said the reason she said that is because she knows Land's better. You know. I um, loved that. That was a great. I mean, and moment. like yeah, I, I don't think either out, you were on that episode. Yeah. yeah like I keep pointing out, I, I find out a couple times. Yeah, he, he he's a king. She's only in the show cousin or niece to a king. You know, when when you have a country that's got a monarchy, one is greater than the other, and that's usually the king. I don't even that's, think that's why. That's she's not how she meant it. No, that has that has no bearing on her statement. That's not how she meant it. Damn, the other, I was hoping I was the other like, lines, just shit. Ish, Ishmael's oh, final no. line. Ishmael's final line. I loved his final line in this. Oh yeah, episode. it was very nihilistic. Nothing, yes, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing at all. And then yeah. Mohigadin's first line oh. of the series. Softly, softly from oh, the shadow. shadow. She did great. It was wonderful. That, did she remind anybody else of Bjork? I don't know if you're hmm. familiar yes. with the artist Bjork. I swear, I thought. I'm like, wow, she's like the creepy version of Bjork. That's what that's, that's so that's awesome. It. Oh, just from the moment <laughs> she was announced as being cast, I figured she was Mogadian. I've just hoped she wasn't because I've still been holding out that Tatiana Maslany would be Mogadian. And I knew that wasn't going to happen because she's busy playing She Hulk. But, you know, a man can dream. And I think she's great as Mogadian. He's great. She I is amazing that. so far. Oh mm-hmm. man, just creep me out. I can't wait till her and somebody else go through their their quiet, silent battle. <laughs> that would be that's mm. gonna be really awesome. I, I wonder if they're gonna show them the staring standing contest? there staring at each other. <laughs> yeah. Because I really want to see that now. <laughs> Who blinks first? <laughs> just the one bead of sweat trickling. A random guy with a cart pushing between them. <laughs> Yeah, picking up something that drops and then keep walking. <laughs> His grandmother yeah, like, oh, mops, mops, the bead, mops the bead of sweat off the one person's forehead, continues on. Yeah, <laughs> dusts off the Mercedes symbol. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right there in that room. <laughs> what are those uh, two guys, the funny guys uh, from uh, what was it? Uh, they had that one episode in. Um, I can lose my mind here. I remember what the show was called. Uh, it's Star Wars spinoff. Uh, fuck. Spaceballs? Mandalorian. Oh, the Mandalorian. Uh, they had that one spinoff episode of those two stormtroopers. They're funny as hell. Oh, those. Oh, they were okay. on the uh, yeah. speeder bikes. Speeder bikes. And they kidnapped Grogu. Yeah. I can't remember what those two comedian guys were called. 
I don't know who the actors him, were. I'm going to call him Jay and Silent Bob just because well, we, that's entertaining. We need those two guys in an episode with those two. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'd be so on board with that. <laughs> Here are they, but they're, they're big name comedian guys. Oh. I don't remember. No. Um, I'm trying to think of duo comedians, and all I got is Key and Peele. Hmm. The only thing uh, I'm thinking is Penn think and Teller. Right. Yeah. No. And they're no, more magicians than comedians. Not yeah. even close. Although they do both. Yeah. Mm. yeah not even close. <laughs> Him consistently all season, in my opinion, has been Natasha O'Keefe. To consistently rival. Everybody's had good episodes. Egwene had a really good episode or two. I think uh, this was a good episode for Madeline Madden this week as well. Um, and another person who's had a couple of really good episodes, and this one was also really good for her, is Zoe Robbins. So my three this week was Ishi, Egwene, and Nynaeve. I think were, in my opinion, the best performances. Donald Finn and Madeline Madden are the two that stood out for me this week. Yeah. Uh, it's not a scene of dialogue, but I would probably say uh, Donald Finn and then Hopper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, trying to remember the dog's name. It's like, it's, it's like Lackia or something like that. IMDb oh, is it. not going to list the dog's name. No, I don't think so, but I think it's they mentioned it in Twitter. It, it's something close to Latkia or something like that, mm. I think. Laika? Maybe? Uh, not 100% certain, but I can check. There was one performance I did not care for this episode. Um, I, I, we're probably thinking the same person. If you're I didn't like Stuart Silver. Graham this week as Jeff and Bornhold. Oh. Yeah, he kind of just, no. I, it just, I didn't like him huh. it, he was good. It, it, in his performance I like I did. I don't know. I just I something he about took it. that X to his chest. Okay, well, his death, but just, I don't know. I, his, the beginning of the episode, the dialogue between him and Dane, you know, the little war council the white folks had, mm -hmm. you know, and him trying to get everybody on the street to join them, you know, pick up weapons as they're marching through the streets. He yeah. just fell flat for me. You know, hmm. so. Hmm. Um, I liked him, especially when he was like, "We have something they don't," and then everybody just nods their head and walks away. And I know every non-book reader is like, "Well, what? Mm -hmm. What do you have? It's the light." Mm -hmm. we, we know because of the books, they're always saying, "Well, we right. have the light on our side." Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, I thought he was pretty good. I mean. Mm -hmm. Especially explaining to Dane why they were there. It's like these people. Should are we murderers. just give up? These people are are slavers, mm -hmm. and they asked for help, and nobody else showed up. So I mean, the dialogue was fine. I just the actor just he didn't do it for me for some reason. I don't know. He just felt really, mine was Lady Surroff. I mean, mm, I think I didn't what my like problem, her really. I think what my problem is is that the character is so shallow and so cartoony hmm. evil. <laughs> but that's the way the character is it's not the actress it's the character it's, i cannot stand hmm. it's okay. i think so she's doing exactly what's written brilliant there you yeah go. you know it, it's just over it's just, the top but she's kind of how sir Ruff is yeah patty over the top Bitch. oh i already gave you mine huh. you know madeline madden donald finn that was it yeah i'll go uh Hamada's or Hamada's uh, loyal. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Duffy is Dane, and then uh, Leah Costa as Magheden. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh man, yeah. so creepy. Leah Costa would be number four, but I had she's great. I had Zoe and Madeline on there ahead of her. I mean, she's only on there for like two minutes, and she rattled Lanfear. She sure did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that they're sticking to the fact that she's also considered weaker by the other uh, yeah. Forsaken. Mm -hmm. Because she even makes that comment to Lanfear about, uh, you know, you've always said I'm weak. And that, uh, you know, I stay out of the 
conflict and things like that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, so they're sticking with that poor character of sneaky, sneaky spider. I actually have a question. Um, okay, did anybody else notice that the minute Lanfair walked in that room, how dark it was? Hmm. Even yes. the light coming from the windows, and the mm-hmm. minute that Mogidian left, yes. the sunshine came back. Yeah, I think I she was in uh, Teleron and Riyadh. Riyadh. I, think I think she so. yanked her into mm-hmm. Teleron, into Teleron and Riyadh. Riyadh. I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Which is yeah. where Mogidian is stronger where than Lanfear when it mm-hmm. comes to. I think she laid a trap Master. for Lanfear and and yeah. Teleron. Oh, totally. Lanfear Riyadh. walked right into it. Because mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. that is the only way Mogidian overpowers Lanfear by surprise. Yes. Yeah. I agree. With so, yeah. You. I, thought I wasn't that. sure if anybody picked else picked up, up, on, up on that. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's, that's got to be Tello Ron Riyadh. Mm-hmm. And that would explain how she travels away at the end of that scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so different than anything else that we've seen. Yeah. It doesn't even match up with from the book. Anyone else? No. I think that's everybody. Okay. Uh, well, sort of last question. The themes present in this episode, which ones caught your attention? What do you think of those themes that are relevant to the books or events happening in real life? You guys? Absolution. Getting to an end. Like, they, like the, I think that was the title of this episode, right? What will be, like, will be. Like what they, was meant they, to be. What was meant to be. So, yeah, they got, they finally proclaimed, dra- like, the Karakarn and one fell swoop and because in the books uh rand was not the karakarn proclaimed at this point like the aiel were not sure he had to go and do some stuff out in the aiel waste before that could happen um so if they're proclaiming him this early i mean they're really speeding that up um well, that's how the end is opinion. We don't know mm-hmm. what the wise mm-hmm. ones actually oh, or, so. or, or without getting sure. to spoilers, a particular <laughs> other Aiel person who might challenge that. Um, but yeah, that's true. I never that's right. Um, but yeah, at least at least the opinion is there early. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, just um fulfilling destiny, I guess. A theme I saw to channel the great. High school musical, we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, they're all here. They're powerful when they're together. And that was uh, definitely it. Rand had spent so much time trying to be apart and separate, but no. We see the power is in teamwork coming together. And that moment when Egwene is holding off Ishi and then Perrin steps up with a shield and then Rand, I mean, just, man. Is that shield of Tarangriel? Um, I didn't it think it's so. magical, I think it was just magical physically bolstering because her shield is just being weighted by yeah, you know, well, pressure I, hits. I could totally buy that that shield has some. And with wheel of time, I hate using the word magic because he never did, but has some sort of magical properties because it came straight to Perrin from I a hero the, yeah. from a hero of the horn. You know, mm-hmm. so it, it 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 does a hero's weapon and equipment is that imbued with something that would have could helped be. her? That's could just how, that's how I saw. Could have been. It yeah. could have been. As far as themes, I think loyalty, everybody, um, <clears throat> whether good or bad. Yeah. Came, uh, I mean, you know, Perrin with his loyalty to Hopper, what he did can be viewed morally eh? somebody on um, twitter posted the fact that now speaking i'm sorry i would have forgotten uh oh, parents eyes are now permanently yellow yep they are they did, i didn't they notice did. that Finally. before. okay i'll be I'll, i just i'm mm-hmm. glad y'all got that because i didn't now i'm done so. right at the end there when he yeah. goes all he's on the tower. wolf rage that's yeah. where it holds yeah yeah okay that was it <laughs> but i mean you know matt shows his loyalty to his friends in a major way you know kind of out thinking the whole uh, dagger situation, uh, you know, stays true to his friends and actually runs away when he doesn't want to for once when they tell him to, uh, you know. Uh, Ran is loyal to Egwene and tries to help her and then apologizes for being the idiot he's been, which is always good. I mean, look at that. Communication. Are you sure this is the wheel yeah. of time? I think that might be an adaption too far. They're going to start yeah. communicating. That Come might on. be too we, much we of a change. We have to have a line, man. 
She no communicating. <laughs> um, don't forget Lan's loyalty to Moiraine. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that scene between them was so moving. Um, I loved how it was intimate without being sexual at all. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, it, yeah. it was done perfectly. I just mm-hmm. got to hope that a water bond weave can be cast a lot faster than that later on. Hmm. Uh, it'll oh. have to be for a certain situation. It'll have to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, it'll, it'll have if to be. If they still do that. Yeah. What is that? To be determined. Max, did you have any? Uh, what do you want to call that? Uh, Somebody just got to get shit done and gink a dude. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes you got to just fire arrow people instead of sword fighting. Mm-hmm. I mean, you basically got that with Egwene where she just had shit to do. Yeah. She's done with this shit. Well, right? she cut the moment where then. she spits <laughs> the <laughs> plug <laughs> out. That was yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I <just> like, <laughs> no. It's like, oh, how dare you? I love it. Like, did you lose control of your demonic? She never had any. <laughs> right. <No. laughs> never had any. Um, like you guys, I, I, I picked up on loyalty. Um, but at the same time, you've got loyalty, you've got betrayal. Um, in the, in the wheel of time, you kind of can't have loyalty without betrayal in there. Um, and in this case, Balance. it was Ishamael betraying Lanfear and Lanfear betraying Ishamael. And, you know, Not I'm sure you could. Are gonna fight each yeah. Other? And, and you could probably find more if you look through it. somebody. Um, also friendship, you know, and, and friendship in the weirdest of places, you know, it even. Because according to Moiraine, back in the Age of Legends, Lan or Lanfear, Ishi, and Luce Theron were like a, a, a triad you couldn't break up. You know, they were I a couple. Call it, I'm I won't up want to call them a couple, a thruple, You know, because I, I don't know mm. that it was a, a romantic or physical relationship. Ask. I'm leaning that. Know. Right in that I, I, bed I, I, with how he, with Ferris Ferris the way they I I, I the touching I'm, it's kind of seemed like he was remembering a memory he, or something like that. He he likes touching people's faces uh, though. No, apparently Mogidian likes smelling them. Yeah, because he he was doing that to Matt too. He he was really they, caressing. They were just Matt's playing gay face. chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another theme, and, and, and I, I, Bill, you should agree with me on this one: military incompetence. Because you oh, did 100%. point out that both military groups in here were absolutely incompetent in the book. And if yeah, you watch, were. you know, I'm not a military expert, far from it. But I've read mil- plenty of military history stuff. I've read lots of stuff with bu- battles. I've read lots of stuff written by people who've been ba- in battles. I've watched a lot of stuff on this kind of stuff. And I just saw so many stupid moves. Mm-hmm. You know, from two guards at the gate to an open gate, and you've got this mysterious smoke coming across the valley, and you only send your two guards out to wander around and check it out. That was bad. You don't launch ballista, you know, catapults or ballista at a city that your leader is leading ground forces in. You know, that's just... Yeah, let's kill our leader while we're at it. You know, let's take the chance of killing our leader and most of our troops. Unless you don't care about the lives of your soldiers, you don't shoot where your soldiers are at. You know, it just well, so many things in this. There was well, one that remember, in the books, the Sean Chan, when they first come over, they are so convinced that once people give their oaths, they don't even make an effort to guard stuff anymore in the books. Because they are so, so convinced nobody's going to break that oath when everybody is literally like, I swear, literally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they run off and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And they're so shocked. So, yeah, they were militarily inept at fall in the book. And the White Cloaks have always been incompetent in the books. No, two things I want to point out. Because one of the five great captains. At this point. Two things I want to point out. Uh, when soldiers are confronted with a 
situation they've never been confronted with before, the first thing that's going to happen is they're not going to know what to do. So when you have a situation with a lot of smoke, they've never seen this before. They're not going to know what to do because they don't have that training. You don't walk away from your post without getting somebody to back you up. Like I said, it's a new situation. It's something they've not been trained to handle. If it doesn't matter about they don't know about mm. walking away from the post. It's a new situation. It's a new tactic. You're trained. It's to like think if you've never been feet. confronted with bows and arrows before, it's a new tactic. You've never been confronted with it. You're not going to know how to handle the situation. Military code Sanchez. of justice does not apply in the wheel of time. Yeah, Sanchin have never been confronted with this tactic before, so they don't know what to do with it. Hence, they were surprised by it. As far as laying siege to a place with your own troops, just look to Vietnam. We shelled our own soldiers. Because we didn't care we about don't them during about a World War II during the Vietnam War. Yeah. Like yeah, I said, we don't we, talk about that. We, we literally yes. shelled our own soldiers, you did. ground troops. So What? And they were shelling, in this case, a tower that was a known target. You know, that was part of the plan. Hey, they saved Egwene, so I'm happy. Yeah. Egwene saved herself. Well, they saved her hands. So it's not like they were just she randomly targeting help. areas in the city. Little. They were targeting a did. known target. That's right. The target so there was that at least something... they were co- you know, converging on. Yeah. But the at least it was a the... target. Because mm-hmm. they hadn't taken yeah. the tower. They were going towards it, but they weren't on it. You had fireballs coming from the top of the target, so clearly the white cloaks weren't on top of it or hadn't taken it. No, but they and the fireballs stopped as soon as they hit it. They were going towards that location, and things fall from the tops of buildings that you hit. And when you're going towards that location, that means you're going to be at the foot of that building, and things fall. And that's but clearly they weren't at that location yet because they hadn't got to it yet. Well, I mean, it, it's 100% book yeah. accurate that these two forces yeah. would make mistakes. So, yeah, I don't and have a problem with it. And that's why I'm saying it's a theme that they incorporated was military incompetence. There we go. I think you have to look pretty hard to find it. Hmm. <laughs> you know, you find I mean, military competence. Yes. Yeah. Competence. Yes. <laughs> Actually, yeah. 100%. You're yeah. right. That you have to look really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just saying that those two things are very realistic things that we saw. We see the. They were seen to the smoke was something they had never seen before. So how they sure. reacted was very realistic. Shelling your own troops is something that happens. You know, it's in conference, but it's something that happens. Yeah. Whether your people are underneath it or not, or they're 20 feet back, you see this thing yeah. come, your guys are going to back up. The Sinanchen may not see this shell coming in or know how to react to it. But just because it happens in real life doesn't mean it's not incompetent. So as a theme, yeah. I think it's still there. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. What's next, guys? Big finish stuff. <laughs> yep. The closer stuff. Yeah. Let's get to this. Okay. How well did the writers and production handle the characters? Did the writers and directors understand the characters? Jen. I'm going to pass. I've gone first every <laughs> single time almost. And we'll have to that's, think about that for a second. That's an um, extremely complicated question. That's mm. very complicated. Um, and, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to say they understand them really, really well. They, they're they kind of different characters almost at this point in mm. some ways. And some of them are. So, um, Yes and no? Yeah, I agree with that. Yes and no. They really got land fear. Yeah, hundred yes. percent. I'd say they got Ishmael. I'd say they got Egwene. I'd say they're getting Matt. They're not quite there, but they're getting him now. Yeah. This episode yeah. showed me they get Matt at least yeah. a little. Yeah. Um, Karen, I don't think is all the way there yet. Mm-hmm. Work in progress. Yeah. I feel yeah, like they understand. I think they understand Perrin. I I like. I, I'll say it this way. I like mm-hmm. how they've dealt with Perrin more than like I like how they've dealt with my favorite character in all fiction no matter what genre or medium and that's Matt Matt's my favorite character of all time 
I don't feel like they completely understand Matt no, to the don't. level that they are understanding Perrin. And, I mean, they did a really good job season one with Matt, or at least the first six episodes with Matt, five or six episodes with Matt. Things in real life screwed that up for the last episode or two, and it took a while. They're starting to get back towards understanding Matt. It's a the one thing that holds me back from really saying they understand Matt is their insistence that he's a hero of the horn, and that's just not who Matt Cawthon is. Matt wants to be a hero of the horn. Matt would love to be a hero of the horn. Hmm. Matt's a big damn hero, but he's not a hero of the horn. And he's no bloody hero. Yeah, yeah. He takes that with him. He's still going to say and, that, even though he knows he is. I know, but that's making him what's hero keeping horn, him from it. Making him a hero of the horn. This is um, it, how he feels about being a hero. He, he If just, he was a hero of the horn, he couldn't say that anymore. So I think he, he, it's out of spite. Oh, he'll say it. <laughs> he'll say it tongue in cheek. He's a wink, probably qualified. But yeah. But Jim is absolutely right. They got Lanfear. Oh, yeah. They've got yeah. Lanfear. So happy with how they did her this this they season. Did. Yeah. They just did. I think a they nuanced did really well. character truly got her emotion, her motivations, her, her feelings for Rand, and everything. It was just so well done. I think they did Moraine really well. Um, considering in the book, we don't have much to go on as far as her personal sort of life and, and so i think they have figured out 100 percent who maureen is um, i think they Land, got her vibe. i think they got that too yeah did you they'll, realize they'll lady and vera is in the books is she she's her mentioned and, yeah she she and maureen's other sister are mentioned in new spring yeah oh, okay they'll uh the way they have maureen in the show will definitely make you understand why rand and maureen conflict so much yes yeah. agreed like reading the books, you're like, why is Rand always like, you know, clashing so much with her? And in the show, it's like it, it's so blatantly obvious now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I I think they've definitely improved this season over the first season. Oh, I yeah. disagree about Matt during the first season because I wasn't all the way happy because there was almost zero joy to him at all. It was almost all darkness in the first season, and, and okay. we didn't get any of the yeah. Matt that we love. I That's think a fair point. This season we a got dark and sad character last season. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got some sprinkles here and there of his sense of humor from the word go when he's in the cell. You know, doing the whole locked thing, mimicking yeah. as yeah. it's. I mean, come on, that was just like all right. They're starting to get Matt, so I think they're getting there. They are getting there with Matt. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's with, pretty much Matt in book one, though. I think what they did with Matt in the first episode of season one really showed to me that they understand Matt. You know, his focus on protecting his little sisters and doing mm-hmm. what he had to do, running out into this massacre that's going on to find his sisters and hide them. Mm-hmm. That's Matt running into a burning house to rescue kids, you know? Right. You know, that's or exactly Swan what Matt Dunkle. would have done. Yeah, that's that's where, <laughs> you know, I'm referring, you know, yep. that's Matt. You know, that that was, yeah, you're right. You know, he, he was pretty broody most of the season, but I, I think that was everything in the show. There, was, I, I didn't see as many moments of joy that the characters had as, you know, as they could have had, but... I mean, we did with some with the when they were with the Tuatha on, but yeah, yeah. The, um, Land for me is kind of like on the shelf, like on the fence on me for like how well I handled them this season. I mm. so agree. Okay. Okay. It's like the Hard first agree. first half is like they kind of have a like dwaddling back and forth doing random stuff. Mm-hmm. We kind of see them do a fight scene, which some people didn't like understand fully like how difficult that fight really was mm-hmm. and then we finally see him really get in a good fight with a lot of different soldiers see how actually competent a fighter here fighter he actually is 
catching arrows man land yeah. suffers from the fact that the writers have <laughs> such uh obsession with humanizing and emotionalizing mm -hmm. the waters they've put so much screen time into that mm -hmm. and, and land suffers what we want to see land's progression suffers because of that mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. for me it's like we don't have that comparison for land like okay if we'd seen uh say masana fight one fade and see his ass get kicked we'd see okay lana is clearly a better fighter but we don't get that comparison so how do you rate how much good of a fighter he is when you don't get these comparisons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you don't see a scene where a fade takes out 10 soldiers so go okay lan took on three by himself mm -hmm. hmm, you know yeah so you're not seeing how strong a fighter he is and you know okay maybe this guy should teach ran how to use a sword mm -hmm. for when he can't uh, do this thing called channeling because he's being shielded all the time. Mm -hmm. Catching like, repeated arrows was really boss, though. It was really good. <laughs> and you notice, though, both of them were after he had the border bond back. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it, because it's stronger. He, he never yeah. would have been able to do he that do if that. she hadn't rebound him. No, of course. No. Bonded him. We don't know. Rebounded. We don't know. Rebounded. Bonded. We rebounded. don't know that he could have done it. Rebounded. Like, like he's an so. NBA ball, baby. Rebounded. I said, we don't know that he could have done that before the ball. I don't know. Water bond. Um, he didn't quite have the same grace when he was fighting earlier in the season. He, he I think that's more of more a victim. confidence boost than it was like an energy boost. I'd say a little of both, but that's only because my book knowledge of what he gains from that bond. Yeah. So. All right. Do we want to move to the next question? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, who would you say was the MVP of this season? Uh, this could be included an actor, director, writer, or anyone in the cast or crew. Natasha uh, O'Keefe. Natasha. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Natasha O'Keefe. One hundred and ten percent. I'll top yeah. you there. I'm gonna go with yeah. Fair Fairs. I'm gonna go with Madeline Madden. Okay. Not so much both of those really are all good choices. She was strong. She was good. Well. Yeah. I mean, episode six, Madeline Madden. I mean, she doesn't get an Emmy nomination for that crime. Yeah, I'm going to go with Just Madeline a crime. Madden this season. I think it was her arc. Okay. Well, but I mean, the for standout now. for me. <laughs> another thing with Natasha O'Keefe was nobody thought she could do it. A lot of the fandom was like, oh, I disagree. I just, she's too I mean, old. She she's had her hot haters. enough. She totally had her haters. As a yeah. woman, and you you just like, blow nope. by it. You just hmm. blow by it. You don't even pay it any attention. That's she was about. so good that we liked her as Celine. We knew yeah. she's evil. Not all the TV people yeah, we did, but we her. knew it. We knew she's yeah. a blooming forsaken, but we still liked her. Mm -hmm. We're like, maybe they've changed it. Maybe maybe they're changing it a little. You know. That's how good she was. Yep. Yeah, she was great. I didn't even like her casting, and I was happy with her. Yeah, you know, not that I disliked her casting, but I wasn't like, yes, uh, just not who I pictured. Who I, I had a couple ideas in mind, but I think, I, yeah, by far the best performances overall for the whole season was Natasha O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. But Madeline Madden is a strong running, absolutely Absolute strong second. The, the and, whole Damani right. stuff, and and even before playing the the jealousy stuff with Nynaeve and kind of you know, but trying to balance being a better person than that, you know, and all that yeah. stuff, which we kind of forget because we got the Damani stuff. But she's got a lot of good stuff in this season. That's the MVP right there, Kitty. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, the Kitty wins. <laughs> And see, I just imagine if uh, Madeline gets a uh, nomination, that Rosamund Pike might just like show up in her uh, window, just like staring at her. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> What's next? We I got I some ratings to do. Yep. Right. Okay. First of the ratings, how close was the adaptation to the source material? One. <laughs> wow, one. I'm not wow. even going that low. I'll say I don't three mean, I, five. I'll, I, I'm not, I don't mean that with negativity. I'm enjoying the show. It's just... It's, but do you it's think it's that thing. far away from the books? I mean, yeah, I don't think it's a one-off. 
away. Wow. I mean, that I would be a one more man. So, so remember, yeah. more man. so remember, this That's is fine. season yeah. two is books two and three. Mostly two, book two. It didn't go past it, Flom. Per per Raph, it is books two and three. I'm I'm going with the one. I'm trying to figure out where anything from the Dragon Reborn is in this, other than the uh, season three of is going to be books four. That's one book. You said books. Regardless. Yeah, I well, think Raph the Aiel and the Karakarn thing into here. That's part of the next book. Uh, they I also think... had Rand. I think the doing all this stuff by himself. inspired by the books. That's that's how I'm viewing the show. So it's it's a it's, I think it's a one, but I don't mean that with negativity in my heart. Yep. Zero, zero. Like I'm not mad. I'm not angry. <laughs> like I'm cool. Well, I love it. I want to see more of the show. It's great, but it's it's not the books. Like so, I'm able to be happy with it. Like yeah. nothing bothers me. It's a one. It's okay. I I give, give it. it an eight, honestly, and that's because. I mean, when I look at it as a whole, mm -hmm. um, is Rand the Dragon Reborn? Yes. Is Egwene a teacher's pet who is out of her depth sometimes, gets taken and then becomes a much stronger person? Check. Um, you know, is Nynaeve a pushy, incompetent person who overcompensates by being pushy? Absolutely. Check. So all my characters are exactly the same. Matt is still a lovable rogue. How they get there is different. But the bones of the story is the same. So, I, you know, I can't honestly go that low. I, I just yeah. I, I can't do that. The bones of it are still there. My characters are still the same people. They just get there in different ways. So I'm, yeah, I'm in that middle spot, the 5.5, for some of the same reasons you said, but there is a lot that they've changed. You yeah. know, that mm -hmm. they've really gone away from, which is why I couldn't go as high as an eight. There's just too much diversion from the books, but it's still okay. I mean, I recognize a lot of it. Yeah, I guess a 3.5 for me, um, mostly the same as, you know, it's Jim's logic there. Um, I'm also thinking back, you know, I just recently watched uh, some of our coverage of season one and looking at how I rated stuff, you know, compared to what, you know, how accurate it was last year. I think I was probably off because, you know, I had it higher rated than some of the other people on this show at the time did. And I was like surprised at that. And I was like, wow. Um, so I've been thinking about it and trying to be, you know, to, to hone it down a bit more. And I think, and like Jen said, this isn't a, so much a bad thing because I've always said changes need to be made. 3.5 mm -hmm. isn't a judgment. It, it, it isn't mm -mm. basing it, it isn't an opinion. Uh, 3.5 for accuracy isn't saying it's bad show or even oh, no, a bad it's adaptation. Different than the it's book. It's just, it's not How accurate far does it adaptation. from the book? That's all that yeah. that means. It, it, it's me. not a subject. I'm not looking at it as a subjective question. I'm looking at it as an objective. I'm trying to be objective right. on that. Now, how mm -hmm. much I like the show, that would be completely, you know, That's that a is based coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. My my answer yeah. will be very different. Yeah. Yeah. So your answer was what? 3.5. Okay. Um, so me knowing Raph had said that season two was books two and three with parts of books three coming for later seasons. And parts of book one. Yeah. And knowing that season three is going to basically be season or book four, a book four. And that we'll have parts of book three in other areas of seasons later. Um, and I see that we have large parts of book two throughout this season. Smatherings of book three, mainly in Rand's journey. Because you mm -hmm. kind of get a solo journey and it's, you know, completely different, but we have the essence of it. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it a basically a four. Because yeah. we have the essence of yeah. Rand's journey. We have like the essence of Matt's journey being locked up in the tower. Kind of the sickness, but sort of not. Escaping the tower. We don't have his letters and all that fun stuff and Thom and whatever. But he's going to fall May. Everybody's kind of separate. Perrin's hunting the horn. Rand's not. Matt's not. We have Loyal. All that fun shit. 
So I'm giving it a four for it's keeping some of the essence of the hunt, hunt of the horn. Smatherings of book three, which we really don't have a lot of book three at all in this. Like short of like a little bit of the ale. We don't have any of the dark hounds. We have pretty much nothing in book three, except for Rand's journey, as far as I could tell. Just curious, Max, do you remember what you gave it last year for accuracy? I posted a link earlier the other day, but I don't remember the numbers offhand. That's why I was watching it, is because when you posted that, you put you gave it a four last year for accuracy for yeah. season one. Same. Well, two years ago. So when you said four yeah, just rank, now, I was like, wow, they're pretty consistent. Consistent. I rank it higher because I'm a Stephen King fan and I <laughs> have seen so many of his works that have been completely oh, yeah. truncated and <laughs> they are nothing. Nothing. I mean, you ask me the rating yeah. for like the shining Cooper's version, I'm gonna give you like a one. Yeah. It's wow. a great movie. As it's worse than Lawnmower Man. It's a it's not he one. hated it. But like I said, that's just my objective like score of like how closer to the book. Right. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't put it like you're not gonna see uh, you know Matt kick Glad's ass in this book season. You know. Unfortunately, we're not yes. That. We're not seeing that. So it's not, not that kind of adaptation, adaptation yet. We haven't met uh, him yet. I'm still hoping Matt will take him out. Hopefully. Uh, the next question. How much did you enjoy the episode as if you've never read the books? Glenn. This episode is never read the books? Probably no, a 7-5. The season. Se- season. The season. season. Oh, the season, my bad. Probably a 7-5 still. Um, I, I wouldn't have, you know... I, I wouldn't have had nearly as many complaints if I didn't know what was written. So maybe I should say an eight. I'll mm-hmm. say an eight. Mm-hmm. Jim? I gave it a seven five. And it's only that low because I think people who haven't read the books are going to be missing some things that would have increased their value of it. Mm-hmm. So there's some missing connections. They're going to leave them a little lost. Seven five. Mm-hmm. I gave it a ten. Nice. Mm. Bill? Um, honestly, 9.5, and I'm basing that off my wife and all <laughs> of the people who have never read the books that are doing reactions, they absolutely loved this season overall. Mm-hmm. They oh. don't realize they're missing the Easter eggs <laughs> here and there that mm-hmm. you know we'll usually point out to them if they're interested in knowing because we're there. Mm-hmm. We're kind of nerdy about this stuff. So, But yeah, I mean... Based on that, nine point five, pretty Jen? close to per. Oh, Sandman yeah, is ten, so hmm. I'll put it that way. Eight. Okay. Okay. And how much did you enjoy the show? Taking all that into account, the adaptation, as if you never read the books, putting it all together, how you feel about the show in general, whatever. I'm gonna give it the same score I gave the season last year, as when I was editing your guys' recap video, I added all my all scores. Um, for this one, I, I'm going to say 5.5. As, as... I enjoy it more than that. <laughs> Five is average. Five is average. I, I had too many things that annoyed me to keep me enjoying it as much as I would have liked, even though it was a good like any given episode would have been a good episode i admit it's good tv i just didn't enjoy it because i had complaints about different things jen um probably it's it's gonna lower from an eight but not by much so it's probably gonna be either 6.5 to 7 um there's a couple of things that i was just like oh man pretty much how they did land and and um matt uh, to be honest with you, but they're they are bringing that up. They're bringing them up. They're bringing them way up. So I I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Uh, depending on on how they go, and I absolutely love some things. Most of the changes I agree with. Um, so it's just kind of making go huh at some points. That's kind of taking me out of it. Like if I didn't have the books, I wouldn't go huh at some things. I'd just be like, cool. What's going to happen next? So since I don't have that reaction, I would probably say seven 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 yeah because Jim? i go huh <laughs> i give it an 8.5 and my reason i've got issues with stuff 
but they ended it so well. They did. That it just forgives a lot of sins. That's where I felt. So it's like an almost an emotional reaction to the finish of the season and how different I feel about it as compared to last season. So mm-hmm. it's probably inflated. It's an emotional rating. Oh, yeah. 8.5. I enjoyed this way better than last season. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, they've improved. Bill? Uh, A nine for me. Hmm. Eight going into this episode, after this episode, nine. They nailed it. Yeah, We're on the road to where we need to be for the next book. Agreed. Agreed. We're finally on the ride. I feel like we're there. So Yeah, Yeah. we're getting better. I'll say nine and a half. Awesome. For one simple reason finale had me going i want to see the next season and the season after that i want to see where it's going yeah. i do too totally sure. i'm, I'm gonna a, give it if one a show more season, does, at least if a show doesn't have me going i want to see what happens next then it's not worth watching so yeah. true. true after the worth first season spoken. i had to keep convincing myself <laughs> that i want to like this show Ooh. i don't feel that way anymore i love this I don't show either. it's good yeah yeah, the first the first episode, the I was like, because of the parents wife thing mm. of it, I was like, oh. what's going on? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> no, no, no. That, that will come into play <laughs> later when we learn she's a dark friend. And here's the other thing: we didn't get a cliffhanger, and it left true. me wanting to watch what happens next. Yes, that's this isn't like true. Game of Thrones where we're like, oh shit, is this person alive next season? We actually get a lot of questions answered. It was the it was the anti cliffhanger. It was it was a culmination, I guess. Yeah. And like, uh, that's true. You know, we did Witcher not too long ago, mm-hmm. and as okay as that show is, I don't really have that same feeling of like I really want to watch next season that much. I like either. I want to watch this season next. I don't mm. either. Unfortunately, I, I think that was the last season of The Witcher. I don't know. So, I'm looking forward to for me at least. The Witcher. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Like, I don't. I I'm don't not. feel that same. I want yeah. to see next season. Like I want to see the next season of this. I agree. Mm-hmm. I, agree. I can agree with that. Yeah. Now, if only Rings of Power can achieve <laughs> something similar, please. <laughs> How about the next uh, season? What's I would what, just what take about a... our next season of The Expanse, Max? Are you looking forward to season three of The Expanse? More or well, considering you've already seen all the seasons. <laughs> That doesn't count. Oh, that's book three then. <laughs> um, as far as Rings of Power, I would just take a standalone episodes of the Elf and the Dwarf. It's a sitcom. Oh yeah, and, and the <laughs> Hobbit family <laughs> and the sitcom. Hobbit guys. I like it. Oh yeah, I would just take <laughs> standalones of those. Absolutely. Just, there you go. Um, Ten minutes short. I would just take those <laughs> all day. I would just ten minutes short of those. I would just, I would watch that every week. Nice. I, I would too. I had a lot and it could just be them sitting at dinner and talking about tables. I don't care. I agree. Yeah. That was the, that was that table. I remember yeah. talking about it with y'all. It was very good. <laughs> that table, man. Well, <laughs> thank you, Jim, for coming on and joining us. This is our first My time doing a five person channel or a video, but uh I figured I wanted to have you on to close out another season of something and nobody wanted the night off. So I figured let's do all five of us. So we had a blast. This went long. I'm going to have a hell of a time editing this down. Thank you guys at home for watching. Please come back uh, next week as we discuss, well, two of us discuss Stephen King. What are you guys starting with, Bill? I believe we are starting with The Shining. Stanley Kubrick, right? Yes, the Good. Kubrick version first. We already know so, how you feel about that. So, oh no, as a movie, it's freaking awesome. Don't get me. Yeah, love yeah. that. So, thanks for watching. Please leave us a like and a subscribe. And hey, don't forget to be awesome.